that I welcome you all most sincerely to the 27th edition of the University of Lagos Muslim Alumni Annual Ramadan Lecture. The theme of the lecture is Leadership Recruitment, the Missing Anchor in Our National Development. Uma started this lecture series that holds on the last Sunday before the commencement of the holy month of Ramadan about three decades ago as one of the many initiatives to realize our vision to be a foremost alumni association, creating significant value and positive impact on our stakeholders. Who my stakeholders include? Our members, our alma mater University of Lagos, the Muslim community, and the society at large. The choice of the holy month of Ramadan as the anchor for the lecture series is deliberate. It is a month for spiritual rejuvenation, introspection, and rededication to the purpose of creation, which is to serve Allah and to follow his will. And of course, Ramadan is also a period of spiritual bonanza, where good deeds are rewarded manifold, more than at any other time in the year. For instance, the theme of an earlier edition of the Ramadan lecture was aptly titled, why Muslims fast. However, Islam is not just a religion with a set of rituals only. It is a total way of life, providing comprehensive guidance for matters spiritual and mundane. It is an application of this, and the fact that an individual total development, including spiritual fulfillment, is affected by the environment that the focus of the Ramadan lecture has been widened to address contemporary issues of national importance. Nigerian citizens now, currently, can be said to belong to the category of the unfortunate citizens of the world in whose country leadership, though in the context of a civil democratic dispensation, leaves much to be desired in terms of a sustainable vision for our country's development, in terms of selflessness, in elective public leadership positions, and even in terms of competence and capacity to lead a country in the 21st century, in terms of having an enlightened self-interest to galvanize and forge elite consensus on how to reposition, how to stabilize, and how to develop the country on a sustainable basis. The opportunity that representative democracy, which we practice in this country presently, provides through the electoral processes for the careful selection or election by citizens of those who would truly represent and take care of their collective interests and aspirations. It seemed to me that this important is either not properly understood by our so-called politicians and citizens as voters, or they are willfully ignored, or worse, deliberately undermined. With the terrible result that the electoral processes spew up and recycle people in elective public positions who mostly either buy or fraudulently and often violently steal the votes which put them into these elective positions. They invariably achieve this because the special purpose vehicle for getting into elections, namely political parties, are captured by so-called money bags or godfathers and the powerful patrons, and they operate undemocratically to install clients and otherwise very unprepared and untrustworthy people in elective positions. Political leadership cannot remain the only job for which no qualification appears necessary except to have a lot of money, usually stolen money. It is clear that for, a long, for as long as the current pattern of leadership recruitment continues, our troubles will continue. It is for this reason that we must find a way to bring relevant criteria to bear on the selection of leadership. 
we have got to find a way of making character, competence, and capacity to determine who leads. End of quote. I fully agree with this and subscribe to it. And to my mind, this should be made the main item on the agenda of all patriotic citizens and organized civil society and community-based organizations for active participation in the electoral and political processes of our country leading to the 2023 general elections. If or when we pull in positions in governance, the resolution of many of our national challenges would become much easier from the burning issue of restructuring to the issue of repositioning our economy to the issue of improving governance to the issue of addressing needs in education, in health, and in other sectors and indeed to addressing the fundamental needs and aspirations of Nigerian citizens. May Allah continue to help us to address all these challenges. We have roles all of us, and particularly we have roles as Muslims to help answer some of these fundamental questions. And the questions are, who should lead Nigeria? Who should lead Nigeria? Who is best qualified to do so? Who is best qualified to lead Nigeria? What are the leadership challenges that we have as a country? What are the consequences of bad leadership and bad leadership recruitment policies, practices, and programs? These are the pertinent questions that we must answer across the board, whether in the mosque or in the church or in the market or in the streets. The Nigerian constitution has attempted to answer this question. But in attempting to answer this question, it has created a lot of the problems that we're dealing with today. The Nigerian, the Nigerian constitution, as much as I, I don't like legal jargons, the section 31 of the 1999 constitution reads, the person, that's answering who should lead Nigeria. The Nigerian constitution says the person who should lead Nigeria is the person, you know, uh, who, who shall be qualified for election to the office of the president if, number one, he's a citizen, number two, he has attained the age of 40 years, number three, or C, is a member of a political and section D, he has been educated up to at least school certificate level or its equivalent. School certificate level or its equivalent. What is the equivalent of school certificate uh, 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 level? It could be primary school living certificate. It could be city and gay. It could be even learning a trade. It could be employment in the, in the civil service for up to the period of one year, even if he only carries five. And he could even mean nothing at all. Like we have seen, in the course of the history of this country. It could mean nothing at all. It could mean uh, government money in government house. What is the offense there? Now, realistically, whether as Muslims or as Christian or as atheists, is it realistic for us in the 22nd century, not 21st again, in the 22nd century, to put forward as a leader the person who do not know the difference between external reserve and external debt. 
But you see that the Nigerian constitution itself has created the problem for us. And you are asking us to solve the problem. You are asking us in the most to solve the problem of leadership recruitment in Nigeria, whereas the constitution, the grand norm, has not even attempted to, you know, to, to solve the problem. Should we as Muslims be disinterested or not interested in the re po political leadership recruitment process? Yes, I'm aware that there are those who say, um, no, you don't uh, get the uh, democracy is shirk, is kuf. And you should not get into it. You should not get involved at all. You should not have anything to do with it. If you want to remain good Muslims, I'm aware. And, I, and I'm aware, unfortunately, that most of our young people subscribe to this. They think it's part of religion not to be interested in who governs you. They think Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring a leader one day by magic, by fiat, that will be just, that will be, you know, effective, that will be responsive, that will be, no. And I tell you first and foremost that the Prophet ﷺ in a hadith that is sahih, he said what nafsi biyadihi la ta'murunna bil ma'aruf wa la tanahawna anil munkar aw la yushikan Allah la yu'thikan Allah an yab'asa alaykum iqaba minhu thumma tad'unahu fala yustajaba lakum meaning the Prophet said, by he in whose hand is my soul, that is Allah. That is the Prophet swearing. You will either command what is, enjoin what is good and for what is evil. Or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send upon you punishment. It could be in the form of bad leadership. It could be in the form of leadership that is irresponsive, that is irresponsible, that is ineffective. It could be in the form of leadership that is totally insen insensitive to your plight, whatever is happening to you. That is what the Prophet said. You will either enjoy al amru bil ma'roof wa nayu al munkar. I'm part of it. Part of amru bil ma'roof, to the best of my understanding, is ensuring that the right people get to the right places. The Prophet said, "Ida usnid al amru ila ghairi ahlihi fantadru sa'a." If leadership positions are given to unworthy people, as you are, so will Allah choose your leaders. If you are thieves, perhaps that is the reason Allah has been allowing thieves to become our leaders. Because essentially, I think so many of us are thieves too. If you are murderers, then Allah will make murderers your leaders. It's a reflection of who you are. After all, you are the one who gives them mandates. The problem of your bread is that the process of producing this bread is dreadful, it's very bad. Maybe the machine you use, all the ingredients you mix, all the laborers you employ. And that is why our bread is not nice. And I want to begin by connecting or to liken the bread to leadership. The bread is now equivalent to the leadership we aspire. And the process of producing this bread is the leadership recruitment process. When the product is bad, you don't blame the product. You blame the process of producing the product. If you want to change the bread, what do, you, what do we need to do? Is to change the process. Is to change either the machines we use or the ingredients we mix 
or the laborers we employ. We cannot have a different bread when we still use the existing machines, the existing ingredients, and the existing laborers. It is a political insanity to keep doing one thing and expect a different result. For long in Nigeria, we have been craving for good leadership. How many times we had elections? How many times we've been having this kind of seminar, this workshop, this seminar, alone, cannot give us that leadership? It requires action. It requires something different. It requires us to do what I call political lobotomy. This is where we have to stop doing things that are not working for us and start doing things that will work for us. I want to liken it also a tree. If you have a tree, for you to grow or to promote new growth on a tree, you have to cut down some of the low branches and some of the dead branches for new growth to emerge. Cutting down the branches of the tree, it doesn't mean to kill the tree, but to promote the growth of the tree. For us to promote the growth of our politics, of our democracy, we have to cut down some of our political branches. We have to start doing something new and get rid of some of the things that we are very comfortable with. Because we cannot grow if what we do is to stick to our comfort zone. Because to improve is to change. There is no way we will improve ever without change. So we must change our leadership recruitment process. And this is urgent because it has to be now. Nigerian politics and leadership cannot change without revolution, not the violent one. That's a process revolution. And that's what I mean here. And I would like to enumerate them as follows. Number one thing is the attractions or the motives. Innam al amal bin niyat. We have to redefine the intentions first. Number two is the process or pre-selection process. This is why I will talk about delegates and political parties. Number three is the leadership, or if you like, the politics. And then the highlight of my speech today is where I will talk about the voters. Because we are the most important people in the democracy. So now, let's start with the number one, which is what? Motivation, the attraction. Why do we participate in politics? That is, me and you as voters and the politicians that contest in various positions. In Nigeria now, it is more lucrative to be in politics than to be in business. People with one, someone with one billion naira, Instead of thinking of to invest, sorry, the next thing they will be thinking is I will contest for governor of my state. Because it pays him much more than being in a business. Delegates must have a minimal requirement of at least, I don't want to be too academic, but let me, let me bring it down. <laughs> at least a degree. I wanted, to be a P, I wanted to say a PhD. A lot of people feel marginalized here. <laughs> but should have a minimum of first degree. You must have a minimum of first degree. And you must have a job that is giving you a minimum of, hmm, how much? 300,000 naira in a month. The idea is, so that you not be distracted by 20,000 someone will give you at the primary election. Delegates will come to you, they'll be asking for 5,000 naira, 1,000 naira. If someone gives them 20,000 naira, will sway them, will change their minds. There was a particular delegate when I went to his house. He said, Doctor, please, don't come to my house again. Me, I'm only waiting for instruction. If they say we should vote for you, we'll vote for you. If they say we should not vote for you, we'll not vote for you. And I respected that. And I stopped going to him. Some will not tell you the truth. They will tell you they're still influential. So there should be that minimal requirement so that a little talking will not influence them to do the bad choices. And that's number two. Perhaps you want to create a new political party that will change that, but I doubt if these two big 
prominent parties. We want to do that at this moment. What is number three? Are we together? What is the number three thing to change? Let's talk change about the politics and the leadership. And then let's talk about us. It comes down to us, finally. Because there are no good or bad leaders. There are only informed and uninformed electorates. And that is why we have to decide who should vote in election. Not everyone. Not everyone. Because when we are guided by political, religious, ethnic, regional, and financial sentiments in our election, in our voting patterns, then we are not the right voters. We are not the right voters. So people should be stripped of their voting rights. Because we are more deciding to good governance than just the right to vote. What is the essence of you voting but you not having the right leadership? Sometimes who will vote and credible leadership are conflicting. If everyone should vote, in most cases we lose the credible leadership. This is just a fact. Even in Uma, when you elected Alaji Shoaibu Afolabi, you didn't say everyone should vote. What did you do? There was a Shura committee. So for me, the most sensitive weapon when it comes to democracy is the ballot. You cannot risk handing over a ballot to everyone. It's like handing over guns to everyone. What happens? The ballot kills more than the gun. Because I don't know how to shoot a gun. If you give me a gun, I might shoot myself. I might shoot the wrong guy. A lot of people, they use their ballot as guns to bring down the good guys. Because people have to know who to shoot and how to shoot. Voting is a skill. It must be learned. I commend the University of Lagos uh, Muslim alumni for organizing this lecture. Uh, it is very, very important to use every opportunity we have to discuss the challenges facing our country and to explore ways and the means of addressing these challenges. And uh, to use the platform of a pre-Ramadan lecture to discuss the issue of leadership. The theme that says uh, leadership recruitment process in Nigeria as a theme of this conference today is timely. And there is no other relevant topic than this one because this is what we need. And there is urgency uh, for this country now to redefine the leadership process because it's a process that produces the results. If you're, you don't like the outcome, you need to change what you do to produce a different outcome. So I think this will spark conversation around what we should we do because this is just beyond just uh, paper presentation. It has to be a national discourse. People will have to take it up in every part of the country to discuss how are we going to change the process. The political leadership in the country and at the various levels, we don't seem to pay much attention to the process. We rather focus on the outcome. And if you must change the outcome, you must look at the input, you must look at the processing. because. I am a native practitioner. I am a systems-driven person in my thoughts. You have the input, you have the processing, you have the output. For long, we have been focusing on the output. It is high time we started focusing on the processing and the input element of it. So it was, and because we also know that 2023 is coming around, we do not want to have 2023 elections to just be another perfunctory exercise to elect the whole set of people without looking at the process to ensure that the people that emerge even from the internal selection process of their political parties before they become available to be voted on by the, by the populace that they're the right caliber of people. Because if you choose from a pool of rotten apple, you can only get a rotten apple.